Hello everyone, welcome to questions and answers based on the computational finance course. Today we have question number 24 uh, based on materials discussed in lecture number 11. The question of today is how to hedge jobs. So in lecture number 11 we have focused uh, very much on the hedging aspects of hedging and in that lecture I have illustrated how to perform a simulation where we simulate a stock given a Brownian motion and also the geometric Brownian motion and also processes with jumps and how to perform a hedging strategy and then see what is the impact on the hedges of hedges on the PL of your portfolio. In essence, when we talk about hedging, it's always about uh, reducing the risks. So from perspective of the financial institution, if we sell an option or a some derivative, then what we want to do is to set up a a hedge, this means the offsetting trades, such that we are immune to the market fluctuations. This means that if we have sold a derivative to a counterparty and this derivative, and let's say underlying, is moving uh, because of some market events, whatever situation, we don't want to be affected by that. Banks, they don't want to take risks. They just want to sell a derivative, hedge, offset this derivative using some other derivatives, such that the net impact is zero, so they are immune to the market fluctuations, while the benefit from the, from the financial institution's perspective is that uh, on the top of the fair value of derivative pricing, there will be additional premium that is basically booked as a profit. So this is basically principle. So the question now is if we have a, a diffusive process, um, how this hedging proce procedure works and what happens if we have underlying that has jumps. That happens to be much more difficult. As you will see in this uh, answer for this question, uh, this aspect of this approach of hedging jumps, it can be approached from the perspective of hedging models with stochastic volatility, like for example, the model of Hessel. So here in this lecture, I have uh, presented uh, a code and also um, illustrated the strategy of hedging. So the most important takeaway here, so in this, is, this is a black Scholes case, blue line is the stock uh, process. So we start with one and then stock finishes in the money. Then the second scenario, we have a stock which finishes uh, out of the money. So it's basically below strike. So this black dotted line is uh, our strike. And the most important here is the, the, the green, uh, green path, which is delta. So you can see if our stock finishes uh, in the money, then our delta is going to one. And if the stock goes below, under strike, uh, our strike at the maturity, at the expire of our option, then delta goes to zero. So what happens that if we have this uh, hedging strategy in a building of a hedging portfolio of Black Scholes case, we always have an assumption that we are re-hedging or rebalancing our portfolio every single day. This means that every day, once we have a, 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 a option that we sold an option, every single day, depending on market fluctuations, we rebalance our hedging portfolio and then overall we expect that at the end of our uh, um, maturity of expiry of our option, then if we have our portfolio, hedging portfolio versus the value of a derivative, if we put them together, the value should be zero. And this is illustrated here by this red line. And the, the quality of our hedge, whether we are hedging properly or we are under hedging or over hedging, will depend on the frequency of our hedges. So under the Black-Scholes case, we assume that we do infinitely many hedges. So it's a continuum process of hedging. And this is illustrated in this experiment here. So here you can see I have performed two simulations. First simulation is we have uh, two steps. So we only hedge two times within the lifetime of our option. And this is a distribution of a PL. So you see it on average, indeed, it looks like we have uh, the overall profit and loss is zero. However, there are scenarios for which we can we can we can have a minus 0.1 or also we can end up with a positive. So hedges, in this case, we could lose money, but also we could gain. If we increase the frequency to 2000 steps, so instead of 10, we have 2000, then distribution is much more narrower. So you see this fluctuations between the losses and gains are becoming closer, closer to zero. So this is something which we expect to have. Ideally, you would like to have a hedge, which is set up in a way that uh, it's always zero. This could be simply done by, for example, imagine you have sold uh, some exotic derivative and at the same time you manage to buy the same derivative from somebody else. Then 
uh, of course, hopefully you will manage to do it in a way that you have sold at the with a premium and also you have bought at a discount. This means that if you put those derivatives together, then overall risk zero because you have uh, uh, those two transactions, they offset each other and you have gained on to both sides uh, with a discount and also the premium that you have charged. Of course, this is not the full story because the counterparties that you have uh, signed a contract, this exotic derivative that you bought and sold, counters parties may default. This means you encounter different type of risk. However, this type of risk is not uh, included in the, here in this, uh, in this question. So that would be the ideal case scenario where you don't need to rebalance your portfolio because you essentially have contracts that they 100% offset each other. Of course, this is a very ideal scenario. In practice, we talk about a, a portfolio, for example, of derivatives, and then we are hedging in a set of the whole portfolio of, uh, of different trades. So this is the situation if we have diffusive process. So this is a case of geometric Brownian motion. Of course, the question is how this will look like if we are dealing with jumps. So for that reason, uh, in this lecture, we have considered a Merton's model. So we have uh, our Brownian motion. So this is Lackinger's Black-Scholes case. And also we have additional term corresponding to uh, two jumps. So this is the Poisson process. And then we have an element corresponding to the magnitude of jumps. And here is the counting how many jumps will happen. If, uh, if we talk about whole interval of time, in the infinitesimal small interval of time, this will be only zero or one. So it's only one jump at the time. However, if we talk about integral, then it could be multiple jumps over the path. And this is what we see here on the left hand side. So again, we have a scenario where stock finishes out of the money and in the money. So we can see and the impact on delta. So delta, you see, it's also these jumps which happen here in the stock. And also we have here two jumps, at least the ones that we the magnitude is big enough that we can see in this graph. Then also this has a really big impact on delta. So the question here is if we have a frequency of uh, we, we are rebalancing our portfolio, we are rehedging. Uh, is there, there an impact of those jumps on our hedging strategy? And what happens is that indeed there is an impact because if we have a, only 10 uh, rebalancing of our portfolio, 10 times we rehedge, then we will see that the, the, the distribution of our PL distribution is much wider. So this means it was similar that we have seen for the Black Scholes case when we have only 10 time steps, but this distribution is much significantly much skewed to the downside. And if we increase the frequency to 2000 time steps, then you see there is not so much big improvement overall on the, uh, on the distribution of PNL. So if we have jumps, this experiment suggests that if we have jumps, even if we would increase the frequency of our uh, rehedging, we will not have, uh, let's say, perfect hedge. So this means this risk, which comes from uh, Poisson, uh, the jump risk, has to have a different treatment. So that's basically the whole problem. And this is why this question is like that. This is why challenging question, because you have to think how to offset, how to fix this type of problem where you increase the frequency frequency of rebalancing. However, you don't see impact on your PNL. Uh, approach that is uh, recommended, or actually this is the, one of the, the, the simplest way of thinking about it, is to follow the, the route that we have seen already in the derivations of the hedging portfolio for the Heston model or model with stochastic volatility. So what happens there is that in a standard Black-Scholes case or diffusive single uh, factor model, we have a portfolio, replicating portfolio, where we have a sold an option and then we have a delta hedge of a stock. So this is basically this part is a standard Black-Scholes, let's call it BS here. And then in the case of a stochastic volatility, our portfolio also includes this additional term. So let's make it a bigger box here. Additional term, which is Heston. So this will be Heston here. And this additional term is that if we have sold an option with a strike K1, then in order to hedge risks associated with stochastic volatility, we should also hedge or buy or sell option with different strike. The reason for that is uh, related to this kind of graph, that if we have a stock and we look at the delta, it's very highly correlated. So if we have one stock, one actually this pink, pink curve is a call option price, this call option price will be highly correlated to call option price with a different strike. So for that reason, we can actually offset 
uh, this risk from this option using some option with a with a different strike. So hopefully we will have a, a scenario here that we are trading an option which is less liquid, and then we are able to hedge this risk with option which is much more liquid. And that will be basically the strategy. If you do the opposite, that could be quite expensive because you'll be hedging something which is very liquid with a derivative that is illiquid. So this kind of additional degree of freedom. So here, uh, the, the strategy for hedging jumps is to uh, mitigate that risk by buying or selling derivative, which also depends on the same jump process. So this jump will be included in this quanti quantity, will be also in the stock, but we know from our experiment that this is insufficient. And then we also have to include additional option. And actually it's proven that this may still be insufficient. So this means that distribution here may be still skewed and you will need to include more options to hedge that risk. And there are some literature done, how many options you will need to add to your portfolio in order to hedge that jump risk. And uh, the magic number is about seven. So if you would like to have a, a, a very good hedge for options with including jumps, then you need, to, you need to buy or sell seven additional options with different strikes in order to completely offset that uh, that risk. So this is kind of interesting, uh, interesting finding. And uh, basically, if you think of a hedging of jumps, Think of also in the terms of uh, what is the strategy of hedging models with stochastic volatility. And that should be enough to set up some sort of reasonable hedge for the risks. So I hope it's clear. Uh, see you next time. Bye bye.